another project here. Uh, I made a trade with a kid who's like 15 years old, and he's collecting this kind of stuff up. But anyway, this is an old uh, post drill, blacksmith's post drill. Gets bolted onto the, the beam off of these lugs right here, and uh, we're missing uh, quite a few pieces. Uh, there's supposed to be a flywheel that goes on here and up here. There's a there's a crank that moves the elevation, and then through this here, there's a square hole in this, and there's a handle that goes here, and that's how you crank the, the machine. Uh, what else is missing? Okay, so off of this boss right here, you can see right here, there's a there's a load, there's an eccentric on here, and as that eccentric comes by, it moves a, a little rocker, and on the top of the hand wheel on the top, there's a little ratchet mechanism. So as you're cranking, it's feeding down. So, you know, this thing's, uh, there's a there's a patent date here on the chuck, but I'm pretty sure that applies only to the chuck. It was 1907, so we know this has got to have been built after 1907. Uh, you know, within 20 years probably of that or something. Uh, anyway, so uh, we got to find some parts, right? So anyway, I went over to a buddy of mine's house, and I know that he had several of these. So we went to digging around. I mean, we spent all day out there looking, finding stuff. And uh, one of them had this hand wheel here on it, and you could see the teeth that are cast in. They're just cast. These aren't machined. So the only machine work that was done on this piece here is on the bottom. It's been surfaced. They faced it, and then they, they made that bore. And I get well. I guess they cut the threads for this too. Um, this handle is wrong. It should be much taller, probably like that. Anyway, so we found that, and that's pretty close. But the bore on this is uh, a little bit bigger than this because it came off of a bigger model. But we measured all of them that he had, and I mean they were within an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna figure a way to make this into a pattern because he wants his part back. And then, uh, what else were we missing here? Oh, the flywheel. So we were looking all over the place for a flywheel, and then, son of a gun, here's the flywheel. That goes back here on the back side. And this is, seems to be pretty much the exact right one, except uh, it's got this, you know, crank knob on here. And on this particular model, it wouldn't have had that. I'm sure I've seen some other ones on YouTube that had the crank just right on the flywheel. Um, that's a pretty hefty piece of metal right there. But anyways, that's exactly right. In fact, the bore is even right. All the ones we looked at, they didn't have the right flywheel. This is 12 inch. The other ones were all like 14. And then the last thing he goes, hey, hang on a minute. So we walked back into a shop and there it was hanging on the wall. We didn't even have to take it off of anything. So we're going to turn that into a pattern. Make one of those. Uh, the other thing, what else are we missing here? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, right here. Okay, got this nut. So I could take this apart and get it off there. This nut's kind of a little bit messed up. I may have to make another one. We've got a little piece of leather, and then that sits down inside of here, right? But on top of that, this piece here slips into there. Right, if we take it out, there should be a keeper right here, kind of a washer sort of a thing with a, just a slot cut in it. So that's that's missing, and we'll have to. That thing's so hard to put on there. I'm just going to do that off camera. Anyway, so we'll have to make one of those, and uh, this piece right here, this is on it, but I think it's wrong. All the ones that I've seen pictures of and you on YouTube all over the internet even all the ones at my buddy's house they ain't this long this thing is really really long okay so this thing is actually supposed to fit in here to this direction and then the hand wheel slips over it like this right so now this piece is kind of captive on that collar and then uh, the screw the threads are only up here and maybe an inch or so or inch and a half of them and uh, anyway, this one here, for some reason, 
It won't fit. Like I said, I don't think he's right. But I mean, it absolutely fits like it should. That's pretty good. Pretty decent fit for one of these things. They, they're not very high precision equipment here. This is just to put a hole in something, you know? You wouldn't want to be trying to do really high accuracy work on one of these. Uh, but we kind of figure out if we if we face off a quarter of an inch or so of this here, it should go. It just almost makes it right now. I mean, it's very close. But enough that it, it, it can't get in there. No way, no matter how you <laughs> move it around, it won't go in. So we're going to have to modify that a little bit. This nut, you can see it's all been beat on, you know, beat on from them dropping the quill and smacking into this casting here, or maybe you've just been riding on it that long, but it's worn that way. And I don't know that it's really supposed to have this big flange like that. I think that's gotten rolled over. It seems like most of them are a little bit longer and, and straight, so like they started with a piece of hex bar and just machined it round and then did all the internal threading and all that that work in there on it. Anyway, so we got that. The shed and this piece here, the shaft can come out pretty easily. That hole is not supposed to be in that that shaft. I think somebody had converted this thing to run on electric. It's really oily. I, I cleaned it all up and oiled it a little while back. Uh, this end of this shaft is, I don't know, it's maybe undersized a little bit. I'll have, to, I'll have to look into it and see if it's actually still good. Uh, the shafts where it was inside the castings were all still pretty good. It was a little bit gummy when I first, first got it, but you know. It runs as good as you would ever expect one of these to run. So, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of fabricating and repair work, pattern making, and uh, we should have this thing back up and running. So I'm hoping maybe it cost me less than $150 for all the casting work. And I'll do all my own machine shop work, so that'll save me a lot of money. Oh. We also had all these right here too. These are all the, the original carriage bolts that hold it onto. I think it goes on like a two by six or something like that. So these these things are always mounted onto a two by six, and then you mount that onto your beam. And uh, the flywheel, actually, I couldn't stand it on the table here and have these things sit flat with that flywheel on there. It actually hangs a little bit not completely past the depth of a 2x6. So, at any rate, we'll uh, be starting this project here pretty quick, I think. Okay, so here's our first challenge. Um, the little arm that ratchets this piece here, I don't have it. I don't have an example of it. Uh, not one that's exactly like it, although I've seen several of them on the internet. But uh, I'm going to have to sort of come up with my own, at least temporarily, unless I can uh, find one to borrow, and then I can make a reproduction of it. But So the problem here, this hand wheel, I need to put this onto the machine so that I can kind of work out the geometry of that arm. But obviously we've got a problem here, right? It's a little sloppy. Uh, this one came off of a larger model drill, and it has a larger part here uh, on that one so we need to make a little bushing to go in here so it, this ain't a picky part it's just temporary just so I can work out my alignment I will have to make a uh, oh a little plug to go in here probably with uh, some core prints so that when we make a casting we can uh, you know bore it out to the proper size that I need then we can take that out and my buddy can have his part back uh, unmolested. But anyway, what I found here, this is a, an inch and a quarter threaded PVC pipe fitting. Right, It's just a plug. But on the inside here, this is inch and a quarter uh, national pipe thread. Uh, but I mean, if you measure it to the major diameter here, Let's see what it shows. Uh, it's about an inch and five eighths. 
Well, that's not bad, because I need an inch and a half. It might leave just a little whisker of these threads. It might clean up all the way to be a solid piece, but it really don't matter. Like I say, this is just going to be a spacer in there. So that works out pretty good. And then for this here, well, you don't slip in there, so we know we're smaller there. Here we're, uh, I'm a parting line. Yeah, it's, uh, about an inch and an eighth. So, for, like, I don't know, dollar fifty or something, that'll actually make a pretty good, uh, pretty good part to, uh, make a spacer. So, put it here in the lathe. I think I still need, oh yeah, I gotta reset up my, what do you call it there? My change gears are still, still set up for doing threading. I did some threading the other day. I should, uh, let's see, well, We'll cut for right now. I'll get this piece all set up in there and sort of running true, uh, or as true as I can. But it's nice that it's got a hex here that I can grab with this three-jaw chuck. Oh boy, I didn't even get it in there. Right, what the heck did I do? Yeah, how did that happen? Hmm. Actually, we've got some letters and stuff on here. Well, anyway. I'll clean this thing up, I'll get it mounted, and we'll be back. Okay, well, we're going to try out the, the Noga mount here. I uh, fooled around with a little bit of threading the other day, and I made a little stud with quarter-inch 20 and 3 8 so it'll it'll help fit into the Noga um, indicator holder now. Uh, I suspect this is going to be a very bouncy ride, so I'll try not to put you through too much. Let's see here. Probably we ought to go a little bit slower. This is in plastic. Let's drop it down here and see how that looks. thousands, uh, you know, minus a little bit, uh, plus nothing. Uh, if it's plus, it ain't gonna fit in the bore here. Uh, I guess it's plastic, it probably it could. So, let's have a measure here and see what we got right now. Alright, we got, uh, what is that? It's one inch, six hundred and thirty... Five thousands. Alright. So we gotta go just about two hundred thousands. Almost exactly. Alright. So let's go in dollar in fifty, I guess, and see what we get. Fifty thousands. None of this is super, super picky, so.
that's uh, one inch, six seventy, like four. Excuse me, four seventy four. So, oh boy, I forgot. <laughs> Every thou I dial in here takes off two, so that was a uh, hundred thousandths cut. I guess we just took. All right, it better be careful here. It seemed like it like that speed. All right, four seventy-two. Where's that calculator when you need one? Huh? Should give us about a twenty thousandths cut. One is four sixty here. Fifty So I'm going to dial in five, if I can read my dials. Let's see how long we are. Yeah, we got about three quarters. This thing is, I think, an inch. Yeah, it's one inch. Well, that's all right. It doesn't matter.
inch. 440, huh? One inch, 441. Well, that's still a little big. I'm going to try to look and see how this fits. Just for kicks. We should be really close. Eh, you know what? We're going to go like six. All right. PVC pipe fittings, nothing, nothing fancy here. All right, that I believe should go. Yeah, we can go with a little bit more clearance than that. <clears throat> It's nice having these extra tool blocks. Let's uh, get the just a little slob in the travel there. All right, so we'll center drill this here, and we'll drill it out and see if I can fit this boring bar in there. Oh,
bar. It's not going to start. Well, alright. Let me pause and see if i got a smaller bar I can put in here. I don't know if I'm going to have one. Alright, well as luck would have it, I do have another one here. too much already. It's a good thing I stopped early. Let me check. Let's see how this fits. He fits good. Oh, wait a minute. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> what did I say? It's 1 inch 110. Oh, we need 250, so we're going to need more than that for sure. Thinking. Thinking on the OD instead of... to be fancy and I was uh, wanting to put a chamfer on there because I, I, I don't know, forgot to do it I guess, but uh, I was trying to move the Z axis and the X axis just to throw a quick little chamfer on there and I ended up cutting a spiral in here <laughs> instead of cutting the chamfer, so eh, you know, don't be lazy I guess, the moral of the story. Just change the tool. <laughs> anyway, right, so Pulling bar off of here. Not do that anymore. Put it back in the drawer. Alright. Square this up again. Square it up to the part. See how close we 
here. Very close. It's the other end. get as much as I can. My boring bar I think was, or uh, excuse me, parting tool was a little bit dull the other day and it snagged and the, sucked the tool underneath the, the part I was trying to part off. That was all bad. So hopefully this works better. such little holes where you can't get into There we go. Alright. There's that. Yeah, I couldn't, uh, I was trying to put it into the three-jaw chuck earlier and I was like, oh, what the heck is going on? It wouldn't go in there right. Yeah, I realize this is it octagonal nut you know there's eight faces on there not not six <laughs> anyway so here's this piece Let's see how it fits something want to go from that so there's a bunch of junk on the outside I think all right slips into there easy enough So now I can drop this into the top of the drill and I can work out, you know, this will be sitting in the proper position instead of this, you know, hand wheel slopping all over the place. Well, that's part one. Maybe uh, before I get too involved in working on this stuff here, I might go and build that little uh, keeper for the uh, quill. Alright, that's it for this part.